Today I have three spring cottage decor pieces for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy. This is Making It My Own DIYs. So we're going to start off with a little blue truck and this came from Dollar Tree. He didn't have a box. He was all on his lonesome. I have some succulents also from the Dollar Tree. These are really pretty pastels and some of this greenery that everybody is loving. This pick and the pick below it came from a Michaels grab box last year. I believe it was around fall. And then I have a variety of thrifted ribbons, some foam from Dollar Tree. We're going to start off by trimming that foam down so that it will fit in the bed of the truck. We're going to have to have something to put our flowers into so they don't just flop around. So we will put in some of this foam and it'll stay right where we put it. We're going to start by just pulling apart our picks. I love this frosted looking fern, it's really pretty. And it kind of coordinates with what we had going on in that little frosted pick from Dollar Tree. The greenery bouquet, I think is what they call it. I like to pull these things apart. Uh, it makes it easier for me to kind of visualize where I want everything to go. So I just start by taking things apart, especially in smaller pieces. Sometimes you have to trim it up, cut the wires down, cut off some of the, the limbs and pieces, but you'll see how we do it. Now I'm just going to look here and decide which one of these pieces I want to use. And you can see this is way too big. I still like it though, so I'm going to use this piece. I'm going to trim it down and put it right almost in the center in the back of the truck. That's going to be our tallest point. And then we're going to work around it. I don't want to use pieces that are too large because they're going to overwhelm the little truck and you won't be able to see it. So we just want to kind of accentuate. Now my foam didn't fit in there as tightly as I thought it would so it's moving a little bit. Just use a little hot glue and it will hold it in place. If you put your glue in first then you can just put it on the bottom and plop your foam down right on top. Alright so I went to the back corner and I'm going to the other back corner just trying to eyeball those and see if they're about the same. Then I'm going to go here in the front, right kind of toward the side, and start adding in greenery pieces here and there. I don't want this to look exactly symmetrical, but I am doing, you know, one up, one down, you know, trying to get a little balance without everything being matchy-matchy on the sides. This is more of a, a cottagey feel, so it has a little more of a wild flair. It's not really an organized style. Kind of like you maybe would see these if they were growing wild in nature. Now, if you cut down a pick, but you don't have the right size of stem underneath it or length of stem, you can cut off a piece from another, another um, floral or another pick and just use a little bit of wire and just attach it together and, and make a pick. Simple, right? I do that a few times in this project. So I'm gonna add in my pinks now, my pretty little pink flowers. And you see, this is just way too big, way too big for what's going on with this truck. So I just cut it down and I'm going to add a little piece of that wire, leftover wire pick, just like that. Now I have a nice little piece that's firm enough to push into the foam without making everything collapse. Because you know, if you try to put floppy plastic into that foam, it's, it's just not going to work for you. So this fern to me was just way too big. It was out of balance. So I'm just going to trim it down. And with these plastic pieces, that's the beauty of it. You can just manipulate it and make it look exactly like you like it. So that's what I've done here and made my own little pick the size that I needed it. I'm going to put that in there. And of course, always look at it from top, bottom, all sides to make sure that you have everything where it should be, that you don't have any holes or gaps in there. You want it to be nice and, and full. All right, so now we're gonna start with the little embellishments. I like these. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. So I've chosen these because I thought they would make cute little signs to kind of have a stake and be in the back of the truck. Almost like we're advertising that we're selling flowers from this truck. So I'm cutting these down. These calendars have so many good uses. You can use the little ones off the back. You can use the pages on the inside to make pieces. Ugh, I've done so many videos with calendar pages. They just have the prettiest artwork. 
So I want to make this a little bit stronger and it's just on regular, you know, thin paper. So I'm just making it a little bit stronger and I'm going to add a little pick to the back. And you can use whatever kind of pick you have. You can use one of your greenery picks if you'd like. This is what I had, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna add some glue, and then I'm just gonna cover the back. Because initially I thought I just wanted to have a sign on one side, so this is what I would do for it. Now to embellishment, I'm taking, to embellish it, I am going to take this yellow and beige ribbon, make a little bow, and put on there. You can do top, bottom. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. You can leave it off completely if you would like, but I, I like the cottagey feel of it. And I'm gonna put it right in the center underneath the truck. So it's gonna be glued to the sign rather than glued to the pick. And then I decided let's take the other truck or another one of the trucks and put it on the back side. So now I have a double-sided sign. That was so simple, wasn't it? So there I've showed you two options. You can do it either way because this one was trimmed out, I decided I wanted to, to trim this one to match the other side. I'm gonna use that same yellow ribbon and just this time make a little trim only on the bottom. And trim it off. And there's our little double sign that we can put down in the truck for a little extra something. I think it's really cute. Use whatever flowers, whatever colors you like, but I really like this combination with this little blue truck. So now you see me doing what I do in all of my floral arrangements. I'm looking side to side to see what else I need. And I decided that we could put a little farm fresh sign on the truck. So I'm just taking a piece off of another one of these little calendar um, pictures. And I'm just gonna use the farm fresh off of the Christmas sign. Trimming it down. And we're going to put this on our truck. You do have options. You could put it across the back of the truck here on the tailgate if you would like. You could put it on the front of the truck or you could put it on one of the doors. And that's what I decided to do here. Kind of on the door and going toward the back of the truck. And this is what it looks like. And can you see what I see? It needed another flower. That's why we look at all angles. Now isn't that better? Much better. This would be really cute on a tiered tray. If you like doing tiered trays, it would be nice on a desk because it's small and compact. It would be a nice little pick-me-up for a friend or a loved one. It's just a precious little truck. You like it? All right, now we're gonna move on to the next one and we're going to make a beautiful wreath in a basket. So here is some ribbon that I got on clearance. This one came from the thrift store. And I'm liking the grays and whites right now. I have some thrifted lavender and this cute little canvas that came from Dollar Tree. So be sure you pick one of these up. Very cute. And I like that it's got that gray in there. It's gonna look really cute with this, I think. So I'm just giving you an idea of the size so you know what to look for. I'm gonna use some of the pipe cleaners and some zip ties. And I have a flat basket that I've used in another arrangement some greenery that I have, just leftover bits and pieces, and a piece of full foam. What we need to do is make sure that our floral foam, foam is secured down to this basket. And because I want to be able to use this basket again for other projects, as I've already used it in several projects, I don't want to use hot glue here. And the weave of the basket is big enough that we can put a pipe cleaner through it. So I'm going to use the pipe cleaner put it through the holes that I've made in the foam, feed it through the back of the foam, through the bottom of the basket, back up, and then secure it down on each side. This is gonna keep this thing in place nicely. I picked it up after I had it all attached and shook it really well, and it stayed right where it needed to stay. So that was perfect. If you don't wanna use your basket for, you know, another, wreath maybe later on or another project, then you can go ahead and just glue your foam down if that's what you wanna do. You could also use pipe cleaners here if you don't have zip ties. My zip ties come from Dollar Tree and so do the pipe cleaners. So hopefully you can find one or the other in your store. The prices now are $1.25 in my area. 
um, where they were my stores were a little bit slower changing their prices uh, I think than other places according to the videos that I had seen but yeah it's finally happened not sure how I feel about it yet all right I'm gonna use my staple gun with really short staples just to attach these on to the backs of the sign and I'm stapling it into the canvas there and into the little there's like a board underneath there that the staples go into and that way I don't poke a hole through anything and I'm just going to give it a few twists so that it doesn't fall out because it's not really tight. And then I'm going to feed those pipe cleaners through the basket. I'm just trying to, I know that I want this sign far down, pretty far down, because the bulk of my arrangement is going to be above the sign. We will have some going on below the sign, but mainly above the sign. So once I get those where I like them, I'm going to twist them around so they don't fall off and then just trim those off. And poke your little extra wires down into the basket. That way you don't scratch your wall or your door or wherever you intend to hang this. All right. And by all means, if you can't find the farmer's market sign, any sign that you find, you can, you can do the same thing. And if you don't have lavender, you can use any picks that you like. So I love these. I got these at the thrift store. And I know that I wanted to use those in an arrangement by themselves. I just, I don't mix lavender with other things. I like to use them by themselves in a project, you know, let them be center stage. So I'm trimming off what I don't need. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the little grass here that I have. And the grass is kind of a frosted looking grass as well. They were in bigger picks and I just cut them apart. I want this to look kind of fanned out. So I'm taking these pieces and fanning those out or sticking those in that almost like sun rays into that floral foam. So you remember when we were kids and we, and we drew the sun and we had the rays poking out around the sides? Well, that's kind of the idea here. Now you can see here how this is, and this came from the thrift store. You can do this with lots of bundles and bouquets that you get. Just pull them down and apart. You can see where they attach and cut them off. If you cut them off too far, far up, then you'll get individual little pieces of grass rather than bundles of grass and I, I want it to be thick and bundled otherwise I don't believe you could just stick that plastic in there anyway so you have to do it this way so the same process we used up top I'm going to use here on the bottom and the length of the grass is the same on both of them I like this hanging down I don't want to cut it off but you can certainly trim yours if you would like now I'm just going to take these picks and kind of arrange them and then on the outer part, going down and back, I'm gonna press in this. I don't want my project to be completely flat like it's laying there. I want it to have a little bit of forward movement. So I pull those picks out a little bit so there's some space between what's going on back and what's going on in the front. And there were some pieces that had been picked off. I guess whoever had it before me had used those pieces, so I just push those to the back. I could have cut them off, but they don't bother me, so I just moved them out of the way. Now I'm going to take some of this really pretty lamb's ear and add it sort of toward the center in the front. I like the color of this, this bluish green color with the purple of the lavender. I think it looks very complimentary. I'm going and taking little pieces of the picks and covering up to make sure that we don't have any of that floral foam showing because it is difficult to achieve a high-end look when you leave all of your hardware and such out. You want it to be covered up with your greenery or whatever that you have. Flowers, greenery, bows, whatever you have. You don't want anything showing. And then just add here and there. I've added a larger pick on the bottom but only one and one to the side because we're going to add a bow and I need space. So the right lower part is where we're going to put the bow. I'm just going to continue to add bits and pieces of a pick that I have pulled off here and there where I feel like I need it to add a little extra. I don't want to put too much on because I don't want to cover up my farmer's market wording. So now I've got some eucalyptus. I'm going to add that in. It's almost like a step down, you know, from the lavender and then eucalyptus and then the lamb's ear. It's kind of like a step down process. So now let's work on our bow. It's a very easy bow. 
I'm going to show you how to make it here, and we're going to measure it out. All right, so there's 12 inches, and I'm going to hold where the 12 inches is so I can mark again where I go to the 6, and that makes 18 inches. So we have an 18-inch tail, and I'm just going to hold it like this, and then start making my loops. Now make your loop. This ribbon looks the same on both sides, so I'm just going to pull it over and I'm going to measure a six inch loop, which is actually 12 inches of ribbon, but it's a six inch loop. So if you're measuring yours on your cutting mat or on your ruler, we're going to be making six inch loops. Now I'm just measuring with my fingers here, you know, pulling those bow ends together instead of having to refer constantly to my ruler to see that they're the same size and that does work. There's your proof. So now we have one loop on each side. Here's our second loop. And then I'm again measuring. And then one more loop on the other side. And we will have four loops. And that's all we're going to need for this bow. Just like that. Same measurements. And then I'm going to make my tails the same length. Cut that off. Love my Arteza scissors. They are so sharp. Okay. Now that's what we have for the bottom part of our bow. I'm going to put it in a clip and set it aside while we work on the next part. Now you can see here what I'm doing. Same thing. We want to have a long tail. It's going to be 18 inches just like the other one. And now I'm going to make the loops. Instead of 6 inches, we're going to do 5 inches on this one. And we're only going to make 2 loops. So one on one side, one on the other side, and then our other tail. This is not a wired ribbon, so you can't expect too much from a ribbon that doesn't have wire as far as bow making. So I didn't want to use a big bulk in this particular type of a fabric ribbon because it's not really going to go where I want it to go. It's not really going to stay where I want it to stay. So I'm just going to add it to the middle of my firmer ribbon, which is on back, and it has its wire. I'll be able to adjust the back a little bit more than the front. And you can see here, I'm getting an idea how I want it to be. I'm gonna take a zip tie. Keep, I'm gonna keep holding it in my other hand and just put that zip tie through the center and then pull it down. Get it in there nice and tightly. You can cut it off and then kind of put your bow where you want it to go, kind of fluff it. I fluff the bow about a thousand times. I do it as I'm making it, after I make it, when I put it down, after it is fixed where it needs to be, and then before I film the end result of my project, I fluff it again. So it's a constant process for me, constantly moving around. If you look at your bows and go, oh, geez, that is terrible. That is an awful bow. I can't stand it. No, just keep fluffing, keep working on it. Believe, believe that it is going to be better because it always is. For me, always fluffing the heck out of it really makes a difference. Make it the way you want to make it. So now I'm just taking another piece of that ribbon, folding it over, making a nice little square, gluing it, and then putting it down in the center because I don't want to see that zip tie underneath there. And you just never know from different angles if you're going to see it or not. So there's the bow all fluffed out. And I'm going to go in now and add in what I feel like needs to be added in any of my little blank spots. I see some areas that need to be widened a bit, and I think that putting a little extra right here would help lengthen that. Make it a little bit wider from side to side. I'm just gluing it to the back of the sign. We don't want any bald spots, if you will. I want a little more height here, so I'm adding that. And then I'm going to dovetail my ends. This is a very deep dovetail, meaning I'm cutting it a long, a long snip of it. You can see how long I'm cutting that rather than just a tiny one, and it makes a very deep V cut. You can do it any way you want. In this one, I'm not going to dovetail. I'm cutting it slants. So you can do a variety. You can mix it up. Just be sure you do something to it. Make it look intentional. And this is how it turns out. And I really like it. You can see some of that lavender is kind of moving forward. Some of it's flopping downward. It's just a really pretty farmhouse piece, I think. Real cottagey. Now, the next project, we're going to be using another Dollar Tree 
calendar picture. And this is actually the front of this calendar. And I believe this is a 2022, yes. I'm also gonna use some of these little wooden shingles. I'm gonna use some of these thrifted picks and thrifted flowers. And this is a thrifted cutting board. One side is stained and the other side is kind of blank. I'm gonna start by, I know I wanna use this front page of this calendar, which is thicker, and I like that, I'm glad. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. Generally, when you see thankful, grateful, and blessed, that's something that is used during the fall. But I think that every day we should be thankful and grateful and feel blessed because we are every single day. And I love the colors in this beautiful print. I love it. You know, I'm using peaches and creams and things like that in my home. Uh, I do have a like a farmhouse cottagey cabin. So a lot of stuff going on. And I think that this just fits really well into, you know, what I like in my particular style. So I'm going to take my little glue stick and put it down. And then I'm going to take this little squeegee from Mod Podge. Um, from the uh, plaid company is where I got it from, but it's Mod Podge squeegee. And just press it down, make sure there's no bubbles. There's a little overlap here, and that is totally fine because I'm going to use my little handy sander here, and this comes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna brush this away at a little angle on the side, and this is gonna give it a nice, crisp, clean finish. And it'll make it look like it is designed to be here all along. You won't be able to see an edge. You won't be able to see where it meets. It'll just be perfectly clean and straight. Do the same thing to the other side and now we're gonna trim it out. Thankfully, the print has a stripe on it so you can actually see where you would wanna follow a line and you can use that as a line to put down your pieces if you would like. But in a minute, I will show you an alternative so that if you don't trust your eyes or your fingers, um, you can actually put these down and make sure that they are exactly straight where you want them to be. You can use wood glue or regular glue, whatever you have. For video purposes, it's easier for me to grab the glue gun because it works quicker. So now my piece down here is longer than it needs to be, so I'm just going to trim it off. I got these pieces in a big bag from the thrift store. You can use Jenga blocks for this if you would like, or you can use popsicle sticks to trim yours out, or you don't have to trim it out at all. Looks pretty just the same. So you can use a ruler and some clamps to make a straight line if you need to have a little more reassurance. If you don't trust yourself to make a straight line, then you can just put your glue on and line these up. So once we have the top and the bottom done, this is how it looks so far. Beautiful as it is, right? You could leave it alone if you wanted, but I wanna try to make a little swag piece to go on top that matches the florals that are on the print. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of, I wanted to show you my thought process. I'm looking at the colors of the leaves. I'm looking at everything that's going on. What can we pick apart? What can we put together? And kind of getting a layout to how I think I want things to fit, how big I want them to be, and where I want them to go. And I'm just kind of manipulating the petals. Uh, some of the petals on the flower were flipped over and you can just flip those back, make them look nice and pretty. Then I'm going to use some floral wire to attach most of these pieces together. I'm gonna grab it up in the middle, wrap that around there. You see pieces fall out, not a problem. Pick it up, put it back in, and then twist it around. If you're not comfortable using the wire, cause you gotta be careful now, it will poke your fingers. I have bloodied my fingertips before, the little sticking with that. You could always use a pipe cleaner here, or you could always use a zip tie. Whatever you're comfortable with, go ahead and use that. Now I made a little sneaky way to hold this on without using particularly glue on the front of the board. That way I could reuse it if I want to. See, here's the stained up backside. I'm taking this little piece of a, it's like a plastic, a very firm plastic tip, and the wire that is used in there that is wrapped around, I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit through that hole Put this piece of pick down here and it's gonna hold it tightly and then hot glue one of those little tabs right over it. Now it won't move. It is there now. And one more flower right in the middle. Now I'm gonna start building outward a little bit. I've taken another pick apart, that first pick that I showed and I'm just going to add these beautiful leaves in here because I like the shape and the variety that gives, just like in the picture. 
there are different kinds of vegetation in there and that's what I want to reflect in my little swag on the top. So there's some eucalyptus here and there. You know, again, this is cottagey. I want it to have that cottage feel. I want it to be nice and earthy and rustic and cottagey. So that's what this one looks like. What do you think? Here is the wreath. You can see how it looks while it is hanging up and you can see how the lavender is spilling forward and I really like that. There's our cute little simple bow we made. Here is the truck. He's so sweet. I love doing little floral arrangements in these little bitty trucks and pieces from Dollar Tree. Here is our calendar sign. I've made lots of calendar signs. They are a lot of fun and they are so easy to do and inexpensive. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.